Okay, welcome to a, another tutorial for our Upper Edmund College Blender Club. We're taking a slight deviation from what we normally do. We've been working on modeling and stuff so far. We've actually taken objects and changed them by um, extruding out stuff. We have gone through and colored the objects. We're looking at a few other little tools that Blender has at the moment. Okay, here is the basic Blender window. If you don't have this already, go File, and then you go New, and it will bring this up as is. Great. Now, today we're going to be working on actually creating some particles. I'll explain what particles are as we go through. Right, see this object in the middle? We want to get rid of it. So we're going to press the X button, delete, and it's gone. I'm going to press the Shift A button right now to add a brand new thing. We're going to add a plane. This plane is going to be what our little particles are going to be um, sprouting off. Now, I want to make this so it's going to be out this plane is going to be long and thin because that's what I want my particles to be doing. So I'm going to go through here. A number of ways you can do this. I'm going to drag it in from there, drag it out from there, make it a long thin particle maker. And then I'm going to flick it back to the grab tools because we're going to be dragging this around later. Right. Now, because I've shrunk my window down, I can't quite see the particle options at the side. So I'm going to click and drag it across. See this little star thing up there? That is the particle options. Right. We click on that, click, and then we click the little plus sign. I'm going to add a particle system to that rectangle. Click. Okay. Right now, even with all the settings there, if I go to my little screen over here, that's the, um, like the user view window, user perspective, I can press my Alt key down and my A key at the same time, and it will start running an animation. You can see the little bar zooming across the bottom. Okay, it's showing what's happening as my animation is running. It's this little plane, plane is popping off particles. You'll notice after a while, it stopped making particles. There's a good reason for that. Have a check over here. Start, it's going to start making particles at um, frame number one. Okay, it's going to finish making particles at frame number 200. Hmm. I'm going to change that frame 200 to say 250. So I clicked it. I'm typing in 250, and now it's going to be making particles for the entire time. It's not going to be turning off. Right. Next thing. What I'm going to do now is, if I grab this, press the G key while in the middle here, and move it around, the particles actually get created, and they will fall down wherever this particle generator is going, this particle emitter. I can go through and I can animate this. It could be flying along and dropping things out behind it. It can be doing anything I want. I'm just going to press the escape key to bring it back to where it was at the beginning. Particles by themselves, I'll explain in a different tutorial what particles are used for, but right now we're going to do interesting stuff with our particles. Right, at the moment they're dropping. At the moment I've got a thousand of them falling out. I can go in here and if I want to, I can type in 10. And it basically means that over this 250 frames, it's dropping 10 particles out. That's pretty lame though. So I'm going to go back to 1000 for the purposes of this tutorial. Lifetime. Each of these particles is only alive for 50 frames before it disappears. Watch this. If I change that to 10, now my particles are being made, but within 10 frames of their life, they die. Okay, I could change it to 250. Which basically means that those particles there, they're going to be alive for 250 frames. So you can see they're falling off the screen and they're staying alive for my entire journey. Rightio. Let's do some more stuff with that. Hold your Shift and A key down. Why not hold it down? Just press them. Click. And we're going to go to the bottom where it says Force Field. I'm just going to go up the top and add a Force Field in there. Right. What these force fields do is they are going to go through and change what happens to our particles as it enters the force field. I'm going to bring that down there. And over in the physics tab, you can see exactly what this force field is. It's got little things, shape, it's going to be a point, strength, one. Okay, let's change that strength. Let's bring it up to let's say 10 and see what happens. Whoa! As you can see at the moment, those particles are being forced away at a strength of 10. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's um, make this window a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm holding my middle mouse button down and I'm moving around. As you see here, when they're being made, 
they've been forced away from this point. Okay, that's not the only thing we can use. That's the force field option. Okay, there is an option here called a wind. And as you can see here, it's blowing it away. I can go through and I can rotate that around and change the direction of the wind. So I press my R key there, and now I'm just moving my little point around, and I'm changing the wind, and it's blowing the particles around. Okay, once I'm happy with where I just go click. Now, there's other things there like vortex. Vortex is pretty cool. That's a little bit strong. I'm going to bring the strength down to say 5. Okay, and vortex is like a, a swirling whirlpool. You can see them whoosh, and they come back around again. If I zoom out, you can see them swirling all over the place. Come around. Let's bring the force down even less. Let's say 1. Not strong enough. Oops, wrong button. Okay, so it swirls around vortex. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, there's so many options there. You know, harmonics, charge, blah, 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 blah. Okay, if you're interested in where to find that out, if you go to the web, oopsie, get rid of that too. And on the, the wiki, the, uh, the blender manual, there's a whole lot of stuff there that tells you what all the force fields um, are used for. Spherical, vortex, wind, blah, blah. Now, deflection. I'm pleased you mentioned that. Let's go through and look at what a deflection does. I'm going to turn this force foot off. In fact, I'm going to just, yeah, I'll turn it off. That's the best way to go. Strength, zero. Now, see this little particle generator here? I just right click to that or command click if you've got the, um, uh, the Mac with only one mouse button. I'm going to go through and press Shift A. I'm going to go to put a mesh in there, and I'm going to make, oh, how about an icosphere, excellent, I'm going to drag it down, I'm going to press the S key down, make it big, and then on the physics key, which is that little bouncy one there, um, I'm going to go through, and where it says collision, I'm going to click the collision button, and then, as you can see now, that lovely little sphere, that icosphere that we created, when the objects hit it, they are now bouncing off it. I could have that as a bowl, and the bowl could be filling up with stuff. Okay, let's turn that into a bowl, let's see what happens. Oops. No, let's not turn it into a bowl. I think that's enough now, otherwise I'm going to run out of time on this, um, on this video tutorial. So. This is just the basics of physics, not physics, particles. We've created the particles, that's the emitter right there. We have created a force field, okay, which is somewhere inside that. And then what I've done is I've created a deflector using the physics button, collision, and add. Right here. I hope that's useful. What we can do, just before we finish, is turn each one of those little tiny particles there into an object. So they could be actually little bits of um, birds falling out of the sky for some unknown reason and hitting the ball and bouncing off it. Okay, that's enough for now. Have an excellent day. See you next time.